Hi everyone! Today we're doing the third character on our giant horror poster and today it is Captain Spaulding from House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects, played of course by the brilliant Sid Haig, rest in peace. And this is a fantastic character, I love this character. So for the blues I am using Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine and Blue Lake and for the reds it's Permanent Red and Crimson Lake. And I'm just trying to create a little bit of texture on the little bauble things that he's got, the little pom-poms that he's got on the front of his uh, top. And then just trying to create a, a, a ribbon-like texture for his bow. Didn't go perfectly. I kept trying to lay a white on top and eventually it just didn't want to take any more layers. So I've had to leave it as is. A couple of times in this project, I've wanted to make things slightly more realistic than I could because of the surface of the paper and... Um, just the fact that it won't layer and, and blend like I want it to. Now, Captain Spaulding does have sleeves, striped sleeves, and those sleeves weren't actually on the drawing, so I drew them in and then realised that I'd put the red stripes in the wrong place. So I had to kind of create a rudimentary red stripe down the centre. He also has some blue stars on his sleeves, and I wasn't going to try and attempt these tiny stars with pencil, so I used a triplus fine liner just to pop those in there. And I think I did okay on this to say that I've drawn them in. The lines are a bit shaky, but that was actually on purpose, I promise. Um, I just wanted it to look a bit crumpled like a shirt probably would. So now with his shirt being white, I wanted to give, give a little bit of definition and not just leave it white. So I'm using that 10% cool grey just to put a little bit of shadow in, give him a little bit of dimension so it's not just the plain white of the paper. And I'm just layering up a little bit of a darker grey as well. I think it was the 30% just to, to heighten the shadows. Doing the little skull now. Use some cadmium orange hue and Spanish orange on this. And then we are going to go into his skin. So I wanted it to look like he's got the makeup on. He does wear the white face makeup. So I put a bit of peach around the edge just to show his skin underneath. And then used, again, the 10% cool grey to give some definition to the white paint on his face. I did have to mess about with the white paint pen a little bit because there were some pigment stains from a blue on his nose. So I went backward and forward with the white pen and then putting all the black lines back in to try and crispen it up. A Little bit of shadow on there with the permanent red and white. And then it is time to do the eyes. So he's got these really macabre painted black eyes. And that's what I was trying to achieve here with the black pencil. And I think it was a 90% warm grey. So he's also got that same colour on his lips. And I thought at this point it was really coming together. It started to, to really look like him with his makeup and the scary clown thing. A little bit golden rod for the yellow teeth. And then my favourite, raspberry for the gums. You can't get a better raspberry gum. You can't get a better gum colour than raspberry. <laughs> Again, using the 90% warm grey and black to define his facial hair. And I always forget the ears. Do you always forget that when you do portraits? Because I do. Now, the hands were a bit strange because they're not a normal kind of hand shape. They're a very, very cartoon-like, simple, basic hand shape. So I just did my best with a little bit of peach and a little bit of light peach as well. Continuing the red stripes on this side of his trousers. And then on this leg... He's got a kind of lavenderish pink uh, colour on this pant leg. So that's what I was trying to do. There isn't anything lighter in the same family than the lavender pencil in Prismacolor. So I just coloured it really lightly in the centre and then went over it with white to try and get a little bit of difference in the shade in there. Just redefining those outlines for the stars. And then the shoes are actually meant to be red. So I thought I'll just colour the bottoms of them red just to pay homage to the red shoes. <laughs> I'm using a Molotow chrome marker for the plate. So we've got a bit of a shiny plate. And then we have got, I think it was burnt umber, goldenrod and yellow ochre for the fried chicken. Again, we've got that light glare so you can't quite see the blend. Uh, and finally, we've got the text. So I just used colours that we already had. Uh, the permanent red, the goldenrod and the ultramarine, or I think it might have been the cobalt blue hue, just to do the letters. And again, define the speech bubble with the 10% cool grey. And finally, he was done. Hope you enjoyed watching. See you on the next one.